Hello, everyone. Welcome to another 2023 Spring Docs Q&A. My name is Camelia Shofani, and I'm the Director of Public Programs and Events here at IDA. I'm a light-skinned um, Mexican-Palestinian woman wearing a black sweater with a white backdrop. I want to thank our media partners, KCRW and Variety, for bringing to you all tonight a conversation we'll be having between Variety's senior entertainment writer, Angelique Jackson, and the team behind the 1619 Project, currently streaming on Hulu. Nicole Hannah-Jones, creator of the 1619 Project series and long-form journalism endeavor, and showrunner Shoshana Guy will be joining us tonight as well. To see more of our amazing lineup, please visit www.documentary.org forward slash spring docs. Before we get started, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva and Chumash peoples as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. Thank you so much, Andre Lust, for ASL interpreting this discussion. And with that, I will pass it on to Variety's Angelique Jackson. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Camelia. I am Angelique Jackson, as you said, senior entertainment writer at Variety. I am a Black woman, a young Black woman wearing a red blouse with a white backdrop. And I was like, I think so in the in the intro, sorry, let's do this one more time. But in the intro, um, Camelia will have introduced all three of us. So okay. all three be on camera. So maybe it'll be me. And then next we'll go to Nicole. And then next we'll go to Shoshana. Great. Does that sound good? Okay. All righty. Okay. And I'm supposed to give my title. Um, yeah, I would give your title again. Camelia will, will have said it in the, um, in the intro, but just again, I think for the accessibility, okay. they want us to say that again. So. All right. Great. Um, three, two. Do you want me to go? Are okay, you going to start mine again? Yeah, yeah, I'll do mine okay. again. And then, so yeah, and lead into it. Got it. Thank you so much, Camelia. I am Angelique Jackson, senior entertainment writer at Variety. I am a black woman and I'm wearing a red blouse and have a white backdrop. And my name is Nicole Hannah-Jones. I am the creator of the 1619 Project and executive producer and host of the 1619 docuseries on Hulu. And I am a definitely middle-aged black woman with bright red hair wearing a fuchsia blouse in front of a photo wall with Toni Morrison over my left shoulder. I am Shoshana Guy. I'm the showrunner, executive producer for the 1619 Hulu series. I am also a middle-aged woman in a yellow blouse with a white and orange striped background. Well, now that we're all here, now that we've all met each other, I do have to note though that Nicole, you left out a very important part of your title. I believe that is Dr. Nicole Hannah-Jones. <laughs> no, listen, I, I cannot claim the title, title doctor because people actually worked really hard to, to get those degrees and I just was bestowed them. So I appreciate well, it, but no. <laughs> we appreciate the work and the, what this what this honorary degree was bestowed for is for this this life's journey that you've had for this life's work that you have now really adapted into the 1619 Project docuseries. Um, tell me a little bit about these months since the 1619 Project has dropped on Hulu, both in the US and internationally. What is something that folks have said to you that has stood out? Maybe a chapter that they kind of bring up to you more than the others. What, what has the response been like? Yeah, it's been um, 
really amazing in the months since the the documentary series um, first started streaming on Hulu because you have kind of two types of people. You have people who have consumed everything 1619 Project and um, who talk about how even though they've listened to the podcast and they've read the book and they've read the, the magazine, they still learned so much and uh, really were compelled both by uh, my personal story, but also by meeting all of the real Americans who are who are grappling every day with the issues that we illuminate in the series. And then you have a lot of people um, who have never watched or read anything in the 1619 Project and who are really just astounded by all of the things that they learned and um, truly appreciative of us releasing uh, the project in this format. And I think the, the episodes that people talk to me the most about, they certainly, um, Almost everyone mentions how moved they were by the story of Mr. Cotton, um, Mr. MacArthur Cotton in the democracy episode, um, uh, A Real American Freedom Fighter, um, and the race episode, which talks about uh, Black maternal health and the legacy of slavery, um, particularly for Black women, is a, a piece that um, struck them. Um, and then, of course, music. Everyone loves uh, the music episode. Jashada, what about for you? Has there been one episode that folks have brought up to you more than most? Um, yeah, I think people are really have also enjoyed the justice episode. Um, people were really moved by the Harris Next story. And really, um, you know, a lot of Black people have brought up to me how seen they felt and how, you know, just seeing the both elders and young people, which has been really gratifying, um, how they see themselves um, in the work and how they felt really fired up and some even angry when they watched the reparations episode in our call for justice and, and what is owed. So that episode has been brought up to me a lot, as well as the, the race episode, um, just because it's so emotional. And I think a lot of stuff um, that people just really hadn't seen before. You know, Nicole, as you mentioned, the idea of this of, of having the 1619 project adapted into a docuseries really does mean that this medium can show and and really demonstrate things in a way that, you know, maybe the other um the other adaptations can't. You know, the idea of putting something and putting people's stories on screen like this. And when you mentioned the justice episode, that term reparations. Reparations can be a difficult word for a lot of people, but you all are able to kind of synthesize it in a very special way in this show. So what did it mean to be able to kind of take these very heady concepts and, and find all these different avenues into it um, visually and, and through this series? Yes, I mean, the entire reason that we wanted to turn the 1619 Project into a uh, television or streaming series is the accessibility. It just democratizes uh, the knowledge and information that we have in the books. I mean, not everyone is going to sit and read 10,000 word essays, though I, I clearly want them to. Um, it just makes it much more accessible. I mean, my, my daughter is in middle school in Brooklyn and her um, school focused on teaching the episodes and students watch them. And I don't think, you know, the essays in the book are not at a reading level for sixth and seventh graders, but certainly uh, the documentary, they can get all of these concepts. And it also, to me, just brings um, forward the humanity uh, that we're talking about this complicated history, issues that can sometimes seem very abstract like capitalism, but then you're seeing the real human beings for whom um, these institutions are, um, you know, taking the toll and wreaking havoc on. And I think it's that personalization, that that humanity that the episodes bring um, that really make them stand out. I mean, let's talk about capitalism for a second. You really dive into the, the unionization at Amazon. We are seeing um, a, a real push of unionization and what unions can do in our industry right now. You know, I, I think a lot of people weren't maybe familiar with the ideas of the ins and outs and why and how it's all related um, to uh, these 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 archetypes and structures of, of race and class that we've that we've created. What is it like, you know, making a, a, an episode like that and then seeing it also still mirrored and continued and maybe people's eyes opened in a different way? Do you want to take that, Shoshana? Or... Go ahead. I can take the next one. Oh, okay. Um, 
I mean, it just makes me think of, of, of another great American that we feature in the music episode, which is Nina Simone. And what she says, of course, is that, um, you know, it's the artist's duty to reflect the times. And so this capitalism essay or essay, sorry, uh, episode. Well, essay and episode, yeah. <laughs> That's the clearly idea. Clearly is reflective of um, the larger struggles um, of the grave economic inequality that we have allowed uh, in America, of um, the, the struggles for everyday workers to have a say in their working conditions and to demand, um, you know, a living wage and a livable wage as we see CEOs making all of this money. And so this was, uh, to me, of all the episodes in the series. This is the episode that most speaks to every American, that this institution, you know, capitalism that was founded on uh, the worst exploitation of labor in human history, which is chattel slavery, um, that it set up these working conditions that Americans of all races and most classes uh, really struggle under. And uh, I think uh, what this episode does most, most powerfully is says the capitalism we have is not the only form of capitalism. And it's not the uh, only type of capitalism that we have to have, that we can have a more fair society. And so we're both reflecting this larger uh, unionization effort, I think that was really born uh, out of the depths of the pandemic when workers started to realize um, these paltry wages are not worth dying over and we do have a collective power, but I hope is also inspiring um, further efforts uh, for workers to, to use that collective strength um, to demand fair treatment for all of us. Well, Shoshana, I really wanna get into for a moment, the how, you know, making a docu-series like this is a, a big effort. And as you mentioned, Nicole, you are adapting these essays. You're finding a way to, you know, translate what was written on the page, the, the journalism, the research, the interviews that you all did. Where did you want to start, Shoshana? How did you find, um, <laughs> like, where to begin tackling this huge project? Well, the work really begins in the essays. I mean, that we had a roadmap already laid out for us. So that was a well-sourced roadmap. Um, and so that was um, both a blessing and also probably one of the biggest challenges. Because of course, the medium of essay is, it, essays are very dense, um, which doesn't necessarily lend um, to our medium as easily. So it was really a team effort. Um, we read those essays inside and out, up, back and forwards, and really extrapolated the core ideas. And then, of course, once you're looking at the core ideas, you're thinking, okay, what's the narrative that I can find that illustrates these ideas? What are the images? Um, you know, where do we have to go? Who do we have to talk to? Um, how does Nicole's story, um, it, it, you know, intersect with um, these issues? Um, so once you kind of get all those building blocks, then you're going out and shooting and editing and, and all the good stuff. But it really, the work really started in the essays. What was the first day on set? First day on set was in Harris Neck um, for the reparations episode. We did get clocked by alligators. <laughs> Literally <laughs> looked over. We were literally <laughs> Nicole was like, um, they're like ding 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 ding. But right. um, we were there. <laughs> <laughs> we met Mr. Wilson that day, right? Um, and um, we're learning about the Harris next story and really just getting to know each other as well. Um, and we were out on the um wildlife reserve in Harris Neck. Yeah, we were we were in a swamp, it was almost 90 degrees. Um 10,000% humidity. Um, and um, it was actually to me the perfect starting place for this documentary because as we all as a crew stood out um, in this, you know, it's a dangerous place to live, right? There are alligators, uh, which one just reminded you that the reason these black people formed this community here was so that they would be away from right, the, the, the violence and, and pressures of white Americans that they felt they could be safe here. But it also reminded all of us as we're complaining about how hot it is and how much we're sweating, um, that our ancestors had to work in those conditions, um, you know, 16 hours a day with no relief. Um, and I think it just, um, it put all of us in the proper frame of mind for uh, whose stories we were trying to honor and what our ancestors bore as we began this journey. Mm -hmm. Given that you had obviously, Nicole, been so deep into this journey already, 
did you find that things still surprised you as you were kind of going through this process, you know, interviewing new folks, you know, wh- how, how did this part of the journey kind of compare to where you started when you first pitched this back in, you know, what, 2019? I know four years, crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I mean, absolutely. You know, the 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 amazing thing about learning this history is you will never learn even close to all of it. And that um, the more you continue to to dig, the more you'll learn. And we really had our production team. Um, everyone joined this because they wanted to work on this particular project. So the level of research that they did and when we would have our weekly meetings and they would bring back, you know, these amazing historical characters um, that they had found, you know, I was surprised all the time. I, I, I learned about people and events. I mean, we, we talk about Harris Neck, right? Like the, the Harris Neck ancestors, um, you know, fighting back against, you um, even the white union and, and the efforts to try to force them back on the plantation and being determined to get land. I didn't, I didn't know these names. Um, so um, that was, that was the amazing part of this process is as much as I've studied the essays of the 1619 project and helped shape them having new eyes, uh, new reporting uh, brought in um, so much new information. And then of course, every person we met, um, I didn't know before this project and it was just such a great, uh, honor to spend hours and hours with people who are every day uh, fighting to make the ideals of our country manifest. And as Shoshana mentioned as well, your story and your family story is also woven into this. You know, we get a chance to see you interviewing folks from your family, interviewing your uncles, talking to them about you know your family's history. Um, and you know, as you kind of dove into how how your family has has come up through you know the generations in America was there anything that you learned that particularly you know touched you or or made you um that that really made this special a, a special experience yeah this was a a really unexpected joy of working on this project because i i didn't um, when we initially decided to turn this to a documentary, I didn't know that we were going to spend so much time delving into my own family history. Um, and so, you know, sitting there with my uncles and learning, for instance, the story of uh, when my father had left for the military and the, the day that he came back um, and he, he arrives in this cab looking very dapper, not looking like, uh, you know, the poor black 17 year old that left uh, Iowa after they had spent all this time in Germany, um, I'd never heard those stories before. And, and I hope actually it's inspiring to people to like get those stories from your family members. You know, you take for granted that they're always going to be there and that knowledge that they carry will always be there and it won't, right? One day they'll be gone. And if we don't collect those stories, so will we. And I also, I just have to really, again, shout out the production team because when we were filming um, in Greenwood, my father's hometown, um, I met Mr. Sylvester who um, knew my great-grandfather. And you see in the documentary, told me my great-grandfather owned a cab company. Never knew that story, never had uh, any idea of that. And actually talked to someone uh, who knew my great-grandfather, not as a, uh, you know, as a family member, but someone who lived in that community and the role he played. Um, God, what a what a gift. Shoshana, for you as, as a filmmaker, as the showrunner of this, how did, you know, working, um, how did working Nicole's family story really help in, in, in terms of kind of planning this all out? Because, you know, as, as Nicole was just saying, at what point did it become clear that this was going to be a through line and this was going to be something you all wanted to utilize um, as part of, as such a significant part of the series? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as a filmmaker, you're always looking for vulnerability. You're always looking for emotion. It's the way that audiences are able to connect to material um, and to stories. And I think that was one of the great triumphs um, of the podcast, for example, is that you get to hear Nicole um, telling these stories and moving through these stories and, 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 and rendering herself vulnerable and being emotional and connecting the pieces to her own 
own life because these stories do belong to us. Um, and, you know, because they've been erased so much over time because of the legacy of slavery, it's so tender and, and, and poignant to be connected to them. And so that is one of the things I think that really stood out and struck me about the podcast project. And I really thought that we thought as a team that it would be, you know, it would behoove us to be able to fold that into the process. And the more that we did, the more it became evident that this was a way, um, again, to kind of wade through th some of the density, to make it personal, to have the audience be able to relate to the narrator. Um, and so it really just worked quite well. How do if I could just add, Angelique, quickly, you know, what you learn, so we're, every episode we're having discussions about, and this also happened with the podcast, is do you have um, a story in your family that relates to this episode? And um, what is so clear is that the experience of Black Americans is so singular that, yes, every single thing we're talking about almost every Black person in America will have that experience in their own family. And so it really is a way to connect this universal Black American story through the family. And, and you, know, you asked earlier, what am I hearing from people? But it, it really is like, they loved my uncles. And they're like the story of, of your, your uncles, the story of your grandfather, your dad in the flag. That's our story. That's our family story. And it helped us to put that all in context. Um, so um, I think it did work really well to make that connection um, that our experience, my experience is, is actually pretty universal uh, to the Black American experience. Absolutely. And Shoshana, I imagine in the edit and in also, you know, in production as well, that was also the response that you had. That was the response that the crew had. It's one of those things where as you're doing it, did you start to feel things and see things bubbling up, you know, on in, in your memories and recollections? Absolutely. This was very emotional, personal work. And I speak for myself, but I think I can speak for the team as well. You know, we we're very bonded now, you know, people are texting me all the time, like I miss the team, you know, and I think part of that is really, um, you know, it's the work, the experience that we went through, of course, but it's also being bonded through um, our ancestral stories. And everybody cried at some point during the process. Everybody had sort of revelations. Um, the work was, you know, very difficult in some ways to wade through because you're bearing witness, you're going through source material that's incredibly difficult to wade through. Um, and so it does have a personal connection. And I think all, all of us um, really felt, and now myself personally for sure, um, felt so, such an immense sense of pride, both for being able to contribute to this work um, ancestrally, to be able to contribute to the work that Nicole laid down and to her um, legacy. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, a real feeling of pride. What and was Shoshana, that? you got to learn about your hometown or yes. your dad's hometown. All right. <laughs> I visit, I mean, really on a personal level, um, my great grandparents are um, buried in Waterloo. My father was born there. My grandmother was born there. And, you know, everybody went to Missouri. And so I'd never been able to be there. And so Nicole and I's story personally really intersects. And that's, you know, such a moving experience to be able to go, you know, when we had a break from um, set. I was running to the graveyard and like talking to my uncle on the phone and, and he was leading me um, to their grave sites, which I found. Um, and really understanding also, um, you know, why my grandfather would have got, gotten there. When I learned that, you know, that um, black, pe black men were being recruited from Mississippi and Alabama as strike breakers, essentially. Then I was like, oh my God, he must have been one of them. That is, uh, he came exactly in that time period. So that must have been his story, you know, and, and get, having a reason for why your, your loved one may have been in a certain situation and getting this window into what it, they have been experienced is just completely precious. I mean, that really is the thing. That is really kind of the importance of this project is giving us the why. You know, there's a lot of the way that history is told that kind of paints things in a certain way or, you know, gives certain ideas of how things worked or why things happen without really getting into how we got there. You know, especially in race, of course, you guys really dive into the construct, the social construct that we've created that is is what we you know now define as race, but really why that was 
why that was even initiated as it was. There, there was so much more to it than just designating people as white and black. There was the socioeconomics of it. You know, Nicole, for you, really getting a chance to expand on these these topics that we like honestly think we know about, you know, what has been the, um, not even necessarily the mission, but what are you most proud of when it comes to the way this work will hopefully open people's eyes? Yeah, I say all the time that we've all been uh, collectively taught the history of a country that has never existed. And so because we don't learn this history accurately and truthfully, um, it really renders us incapable of grappling with uh, so many of the tensions, divisions, inequalities um, in our society that we struggle against. I actually think that, um, you know, the power of the 1619 Project is not that it just tells a story about the past or a hidden story about the past, but it shows us the way that this past we have not learned about has shaped and built the society that we have right now. And that is extremely empowering because if you understand that none of this that we see is inevitable, it's not natural, that it doesn't have to be that way, but that there were choices and decisions and policies and laws um, that created all of this, then you understand that we have the power uh, and the ability to create the society that we really want, that we can do something different. and. Um, so much um, of the story of Black people in this country has been our history being diminished, um, our contributions uh, being neglected, um, and, and the belief that, you know, the conditions that we're in are because somehow we've just chosen to live in those conditions. So what this work does is empower us with information and doesn't try to protect pretend as if the, the present is disconnected from the past, when of course we know um, that the present is a reality that was created by the past. And that's just tremendously empowering. I mean, that's that's the, the single most thing that I hear from people all, the, all of the time is how did I not know this history? Why was I not taught this history? And now that I know it, I can't see the world the same anymore. Well, all I can say is that six chapters, six episodes really still doesn't seem to be enough, which is why we, of course, have the, the written work, the podcast, you know, I'm sure more adaptations to come. But when you look at the kind of overarching um, experience of making this docuseries, Shoshana, what do you hope that folks have taken away from 1619 Project? I hope that folks understand um, both black and white that this is our history. Nicole says that all the time. It's it's not a singular history. It's the history of the country. I hope that um, people see the call for justice that is very clear that black people are owed. Um, and I hope black people in particular just feel a real sense of pride um, about what we've contributed as a people to the country. And Nicole, now that you've done the docu-series, now we have these six episodes, which essay do you want to explore next? How, how do we continue? <laughs> how do we continue this, this period of exploration and adaptation? Oh God, the whole rest of the book. Um, <laughs> but I mean, what what I I really um, would love to see is the dispossession episode, which um, of course deals with settler colonialism, um, but also grapples with uh, the role of the indigenous tribes of the Southeast and uh, their role in slavery, which um, is another kind of uh, untold story. And of course, their descendants, uh, the descendants of the Black uh, freedmen who were owed, owned by those tribes are still fighting for justice in places like Oklahoma and Mississippi as well. Um, and so if we, if we want to talk about marginalized, that's the story of the marginalized amongst the marginalized. Um, and and um, I think outside of maybe the race episode that, yes, that one would be the most surprising uh, to people. Well, I think the idea is this just goes to remind us how much we are all interconnected and how much the struggle is, yes, you know, maybe ours, but it's all of ours. And it's also all of our responsibility to learn what we need to learn in order to move forward and create this progress that we, that we wanna see for ourselves. Absolutely. 
Well, thank you so much to the Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist and creator of the 1619 Project, the executive producer and host of this series, Nicole Hannah-Jones, and the executive producer and showrunner of the 1619 Project, Shoshana Guy. I so appreciate your time and thank you so much to the audience for watching this and, and you know diving a little deeper into this project, which all six episodes are now streaming on Hulu. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.